Well, good morning and welcome back to welcome back to the channel. So I am currently on my way to one of my local BMW dealerships here in the, the northwest to answer a question that um, has been on my mind for a while now, um, which is should I have waited for the R1300GS Adventure model instead of buying this, the, the standard R1300GS? Um, so if that sounds like something you might be interested in from an owner who has done nearly 9,000 miles on the standard bike, uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll, I'll explain a bit more about what I'm going to try to do. Okay, so, well, first of all, it wasn't forecast rain, but I'm getting a few, getting a few spots on, and it's actually still warm enough that I'm wearing my summer Alpine Stars gloves, and I'm not actually cold. But uh, we'll we'll see how long we'll see how long that lasts. So, one question that I got asked a lot when I bought this this bike back in early January um, the, this year was why didn't you wait for the 1300 GS adventure you had two 1250 adventures you know, surely you would have wanted the same and let me just get on to the motorway and yeah the, the question you know stuck in my mind why didn't I wait so I will try not to try not to take too long to explain my reasons for not waiting. But essentially, um, I wasn't unhappy with the 1250 uh, adventure that I had. I had 9,000 miles on it in just under just under 10 months. Two tours. Um, absolutely loved it. This you you know 1300 model came out and my bike was in having some routing I think it was having a battery a battery battery a battery changed on it due to a due to a starting issue um, and they had the new they had the new 1300 in there um, one of one of one of the sales guys asked me would I like would I like to see some numbers uh, to swap and uh, my my initial answer was not really it will be a hideous amount you know given that like a lot of people I get my bikes on on the PCP which I know is a bit of a bone of contention for a lot of people um, and to my surprise the numbers that they came the numbers that they came back with were surprisingly favorable um, long story short we did the deal and I got this and I've done like I say close to, close to 9,000 miles now and short of the the issues, shall we say, that I've had, um, which are in my previous videos, I have been incredibly happy with, with, with the bike. It is obviously very different in characteristics from the 12, from the 1250. I'll tell you what, you just pull in front of me like that, eh? A typical BMW driver. Yeah. Anyway, so. My only my only massive complaint about this one is the seat, um, which I know can be can be fixed, but I'm pretty certain it's narrower, the seat that is, than the 1250, even the non adventure 1250. So anyway, like I say, a few friends you know asked why didn't you wait? You know, I thought you loved the adventure, the 30 litre fuel tank, etc., etc. Um, and that question has been on my mind. Um, when the press photos for the for the new 1300 Adventure came out, my immediate uh, reaction was, "That is hideous. I'm glad I didn't wait." 
but the more the more pictures I see of them that are not the press not the press photos it's it's it pains me to admit it but it's actually it's actually growing on me which then got me thinking was I wrong to was I wrong to not wait so anyway I'm on my way to the dealership now and I will rejoin you once I've signed you signed my life away so welcome back I've just picked this up uh, so I'm gonna this isn't gonna be a review this is just gonna be my first impressions I've only got it for about another hour and a half um, not really enough time to be able to to really you know sort of you know say should you get the adventure over the standard bike um, one my my very first impressions uh, after, after picking it up is it feels wider you know here the first the first negative though is and uh, th this is very odd is so that is my phone an iphone 16 pro max and it just about fits in there um it fits in the one on my 1300 with space in the side to move around i don't know why on this it's smaller it, th that just seems absolutely crazy but anyway just more an observation rather than anything else so one of my first initial thoughts after jumping on this is wow the uh, the petrol the petrol tank is wide like really wide my knees feel like they're being pushed out now i don't ever remember that being the case on my 1250 maybe it's just in in the 10 months you know since i had that bike um i've just forgotten about that i don't know but uh yeah it's my the edges of my knees where the armor is just do seem feel like they're being dug into the tank and also my heels are pressed up against it feels like my feet are being pushed to, towards the outside of the pegs more yeah it feels like the slope of the slope of the tank is more aggressive than it was on the 1250 i don't know maybe i'm wrong but i do feel like my feet and everything are being pushed sort of further out the seat is definitely wider definitely wider whether it's whether it's more whether it's more comfortable that is going to be difficult to say in a two-hour test ride wind noise I don't really feel any different if I'm honest with you I, f I actually feel like I'm getting more on my arms weirdly which I, I'd have to have my near you know back to back but I'm noticing a lot of lot of wind sort of you know on my my up my upper shoulder um, now whether that's just the road that I'm on and the angle that the winds coming at me from I don't know um, suspension is definitely more supple I've got it in road mode um, even in road mode I've got the damping on my bike set to minus two um, so it's, it is a little so I've intentionally made it a bit squishier which does make it a little less compliant but um, it's the best I can get so let's do a little bit of a walk around of it not going to dwell too long on this but uh, very similar to very similar to my bike where i feel like my knees are uh, sort of rubbing is sort of here it just feels like they're being pushed out more there and the insides of my of my boots there they feel like they're rubbing more on there I, i'm pretty certain this this sticks out more on my bike so it feels like my feet are right on the the edges there but apart from that pretty much groundhog day in terms of the rest of the spec anyway let's let's get let's get back on with the ride is it making me wish i had waited for the adventure version at the start honestly no is uh, that's not anything negative to the bike itself 
um, it handles brilliantly um, this the suspension is a little bit you know softer and more supple as I mentioned my knees like I said I keep keep going on about it but I do have bad knees and my knees really do feel uncomfortable in a way that I never noticed on my on my on my and I mean, on my previous adventure um, now whether that's just because I got used to it or not I, I really don't know I'm gonna have to sit on one in the, the dealership to compare we can all knit we can all knit pick bikes it's a great bike if I had waited and bought this I'd probably be absolutely as happy as Larry uh, you know singing its praises um, and I would never give it and I'd probably get on the standard the standard GS and say the tanks too narrow <laughs> um, so like I said my overriding feeling is that I think on a long journey the seat for sure irrelevant of whether it's the high the standard or the low is probably going to be uh, kinder to my derriere than the one on my bike is it night and day difference I don't know I don't think it is when I get back to the dealership he's gonna run some numbers just out of morbid curiosity to see what it would be if I did want if I did want to change so I'll end it there uh, and I'll, re I'll return after I've been given the, the numbers and I'm on my way home on, on mine. Well, <sighs> hello again. So, uh, the loan bike has been returned uh, back, back to the dealer. Uh, the figures have been discussed. What do I get? from the adventure that I don't get from this. I get the same engine, you know, more or less the same, uh, uh, a word I can't say, ergonomics, that's the word. Um, slightly, you know, slightly longer, you know, slightly longer travel suspension, um, a wider seat, wider pillion seat, um, you know, obviously there are some differences, you know, engine bars as standard, blah, blah, blah. But in all honesty, none of that is enough to make me think, oh God, I should have got that bike to start with. Um, like I said, had I bought it, I'd absolutely love it. I'd be singing its praises and in you know, 9,000 miles time, I'd probably ride, ride one of these and say, ah, I prefer the bigger tank and you know etc things that i liked about it over over this the seat is definitely wider um the pillion seat for sure is um on mine it's a bit more sort of tapered and narrow at the back so i think that would um for my partner that would probably be a be a, that would probably be a definite you know plus point that she would have the larger fuel tank um, honestly in the 9,000 miles that, I, that I've ridden this there's probably only been one time where I've missed a 30 litre fuel tank and that's when leaving Portsmouth after getting back off the ferry um, and uh, not being able to do the whole not being able to do the whole journey home in one in one go but is it the end is it the end of the world not really and i definitely think either because of the longer travel suspension or the way they've sort of calibrated the suspension on the adventure the ride definitely 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 soaks up bumps uh, a little bit more effectively than it does on this but again it's not a massive massive it's not a massive change brings me to my final point the money now i had a feeling this was going to be this was going to be the case but i'm not naive all bikes and all vehicles soon as soon as you ride them off the forecourt their value drops and my last bike the value of that dropped pretty sig pretty significantly in the less than 12 months that i had it so i was expecting a 
expecting a similar outcome with this and uh, I wasn't wrong so I think the list price on this bike when I when I got it brand new uh, was tw about in the 22k range it's now worth just under 14 um, and I've had that verified by a second dealership so yeah my 10 month old R1300 GS has lost um, eight, just over £8,000 in value um, in the 9,000 miles and 10 months that I've owned it. And like I say, I know PCP often gets a bad rap and people say, you know, you shouldn't, that's not really the right way to buy bikes works for some people uh, but all I can say is if I had bought this bike outright and I was looking at the new adventure I'd be having I'd still be having to put ten thousand pounds of my own money roughly into that bike even if I owned this out this outright the monthly payments on this um, rise by nearly 50% so to 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 basically trade this bike in into a, a into a 1300 adventure I would need to put four thousand pound into it and my payments would go up by nearly 50% um, in fact in fact it is more or less exactly 50 percent um which is ridiculous and and like i say that's not that's not you know that's not because i got the bike on because i got the bike on pcp you know as i just said if i'd bought it outright i'd still be looking at 10 grand and that just really doesn't work and again i'm not surprised um i certainly didn't go into the dealership e expecting to walk out with a new bike so yeah if you've if you've managed to listen to me wittering on you know this far um that is the answer to the to the question that i've been asked numerous times since i bought this and has been on my mind should i have waited and got the adventure model and as much as a good bike as it is I think if I was buying one now um, if I was coming from the 1250 um, and I was getting the 1300 would I go for the adventure model yes I probably would it's a great bike I think I would like those just few tiny little extra you know bit extra bits of comfort um, but do I regret not waiting? No, is the answer. Anyway, th thank you for watching. Um, like I say, I'm not going to be making a habit of doing bike 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 uh, reviews. My brain is all o is all o too much all over the place to make that sort of thing interesting. Although I might do um, a review of the, the new Tiger 1200 explorer pro whatever it is um because i used to have a i used to have a triumph uh, explorer 1200 and it would be interesting to see how it compares to this so if that would be of interest let me know in the in the, in the comments and thank you to everyone who's subscribed recently uh, if if you like the sort of thing please consider hitting that like button and uh you maybe even hit subscribe it you know i know it's a cliche but it really does really does help um and hopefully it'll 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 make it'll make me able to able to bring you more stuff like this so yeah thank you for watching and uh see you in the next one